In this program, we're going to take a look at the properties of ionic materials. When we think of sodium chloride, what comes to picture might be a simple idea like this with a, a sodium ion and a chloride ion. And we write down the formula as NaCl. This picture of sodium chloride is referred to as a formula unit. But what is the actual picture of sodium chloride if we go down to the atomic level? Well, what essentially will happen is each of the positive ions, the sodium ions, will essentially be able to attract six chloride ions from the left and the right, above and below, and behind and in front. This then results in a pattern or orderly arrangement of ions that we refer to as a lattice. So this is the actual idea of what sodium chloride would look like. And you'll notice there's far more than one sodium and one chloride, but NaCl simply reflects the ratio. There is a one-to-one -one ratio in sodium chloride of ions. This ordered pattern results in our crystalline structure. The name given to this ordered pattern is called a lattice. Now let's take a look at their melting points. If we think of a material melting, we can think of the ionic bond between the substances coming apart. In that case, our ions would move away from each other, breaking the bond that exists between them. Ionic materials tend to have very high melting points. This occurs because the ionic bond that exists between them tends to be very strong. The strengths of this ionic bond, however, can be affected. Here are a couple of ideas that affect the strength of this ionic bond. One is the charge. The higher the charges are that are present, the stronger the bond. So if the charge goes up, the strength of the bond increases. And in turn, the melting point. This is reflected in what's called the lattice enthalpy, the measure of the energy required to break an ionic bond and form ga gaseous atoms. Um, so, so in our case, this would mean taking NaCl solid and converting it into a sodium ion in the gaseous state and a chloride ion in the gaseous state. Here's a table in our IB data booklet that shows the lattice enthalpy of various substances. And to show this point about how charge has an effect, let's consider briefly calcium with chlorine and calcium with oxygen. Now calcium has a two plus charge and oxygen here a two minus. So that's like my picture here. Here calcium is with chlorine. So here I have a two plus situation and chlorine is a one minus situation. So the charge isn't as big in this situation. And we can see here a reduction in the lattice enthalpy that would be expected by this. Another factor is distance. How far apart are our centers of charge separated? If we tend to have larger species, that distance will increase. And as that distance increases, the strength of our bond 
decreases. And I would expect then the lattice enthalpy to decrease and probably the melting point. That's evident by looking at magnesium oxide and calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is a much bigger atom, or sorry, a much bigger ion than the magnesium ion is. It's lower than it in the periodic table. And here we can see a corresponding reduction as I go down the periodic table to bigger at, uh, atoms and ions, I also get a reduction here in the strength of the bond as would be expected. Let's look at some other properties. What about electrical conductivity? Well, in order to conduct electricity, you must have charges that can freely move. So electrical conductivity requires mobile charges. When we're here in the solid state, the charges are locked in place by the ionic bond. So as a result, we're a poor conductor. However, if we melt our material, what then happens is the charges then become free to move around and we get a much better conductor. So here as a, a liquid, the ions are free to move. And as a result, we get a good conductor. Let's now take a look at the solubility of ionic materials. Generally speaking, they tend to be um, very soluble in water. Now let's take a why that is. Let's begin by taking a look at one of these ions, the sodium ion or a positive ion. When it breaks away from the lattice structure, water molecules can become attracted to it. Here I have examples of water molecules. This end of the water molecule where the oxygen is tends to have a slightly negative charge. And the other end, where the positive, uh, where the um, hydrogens reside, tends to be a slightly positive charge. My water molecule now can then be attracted towards this positively charged ion, and it will orient itself so the negative part of the water molecule moves closest to the positively charged, in this case, sodium ion, and similarly this water molecule will also orient itself in such a fashion that the positive and the negatives will face each other, forming this sort of weak attraction. So there exists attraction between my water molecule and my positively charged ion. What about our negatively charged chlorine? Well, the negatively charged chlorine will be attracted to the other end of the water molecule or where the hydrogens reside. So this water molecule would approach and then reverse itself so the hydrogens, which are positively charged, would be facing towards it, forming this weak interaction here. And let's do the same thing with this one as well. So, substances that tend to be polar in nature, and water is an example of a polar material, they can be attracted to these ions. We call this a polar ionic interaction. What about brittle? Well, ionic, ionic materials do tend to be brittle.
And let's look at why that is the case. So here I have an example of a part of the lattice here. Um, let's say this is my solid here. And I come along and I subject it to a force. I, I hit or strike the, the um, crystal from um, one side. Now, in this case, I'm going to examine now what happens to the row that are, is impacted, whereas the row up above is not impacted. So this lower row is struck. When it's struck, it will move slightly to the side. What's going to happen now is we have a situation where we have a negative beside a negative. That's going to lead to repulsion. Similarly here, a positive beside a positive. So once it reaches this state, there would be a net force causing these two layers to move apart from each other. And that will then result in a breaking of the crystal lattice structure or the lattice. And as a result, it will come apart. Volatility is referred to as the ease of evaporation. Ionic materials tend to not evaporate. And again, this is a reflection of the strength of the ionic bond. It's very difficult for one of these ions to take off and move from the solid into the gaseous state because of the strength of the ionic interaction that exists, holding them in place. So that's a quick review of some of the properties of our ionic materials.